All right, guys. Good morning, everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, can everyone hear me and see my screen just fine? Yes, yes. Okay, great, great. Okay. My name is Naveen Prithiani. I'd like to first off uh, thank Epic Street for having me here um, once again to do uh, one of these webinars, uh, share with all you guys um, some of my insights on how I trade the markets. It's always good to meet new people. Um, how many of you guys here are new uh, that have been to my webinars for the first time? Okay. All right. So we see a few new people here. Okay, good, good. Welcome, welcome. To let you guys know, Epic Street is a great place to have a lot of educational information provided by lots of analysts and uh, market mentors. Um, so it's a good thing. Now, today's topic that we're going to discuss is called candlesticks. Okay, we're going to go into a little bit deeper on candlesticks. Now, how many guys are familiar with candlestick patterns? Okay, um, well, let's make this a little bit interactive. All of you guys that are in the conference room, give me one candlestick pattern that you know of, that you or that you can think of. Okay, dojis, shooting stars, hammers. Okay, maribozu, engulfing patterns. Okay, okay. So it looks like uh, there's a fairly decent amount of education when it comes to candlesticks, but we're going to scratch the entire thing today, and we're going to touch a new surface when it comes to candlesticks. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch base on how I look at candlesticks um, you know, with my team and how we do things a little bit differently. Okay. Um, before we begin, one thing I always like to say to everyone that's attending my webinars is always keep one thing in mind is... If you're doing something that's popular, it will not work. If you don't believe that, you will believe numbers when you see 95% of people in Forex fail, if not higher. So always keep in mind that if something is popular and the, the crowd is on it, it's not working. Okay, so let's begin here. Let's begin here. Now, in candlesticks, what do we have? We have the body, okay? I'm going to draw this out here. We have the body like that, okay? We have the tails, and for the sake of the examples today, we're going to call this line on top, we'll call it a hat, okay? So it's easier for everyone to understand. You wear a hat on top, and the tail is usually on the bottom, okay? Just to keep, it, keep the references easy for you guys. Okay, so there's a hat on top and a tail on bottom. What what does a hat represent or a tail? What do they represent? Okay, of course, we can look at a different patterns and everything like that. We can look at it in a certain way where it's like if the body is small and the tails are big. You know, we have hammers and engulfing patterns. We have inside bars, outside bars. But when you look at all these candlestick patterns, what are you doing? Um, is my screen sharing not working? Let, let me let me stop and turn it back on one moment. Okay, I just restarted it. Um, let me know if there's any issues with the screen sharing now. Just a moment. Okay, are you guys able to see my screen now? Yes? Okay, great, great. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah. So, move, continuing with this, is with all these patterns that we learn, that we, you know, spend so much time on studying these things, um, we hear these people, these analysts on the TV saying, there's a doji forming here and a doji forming there. What is all this thing happening? Always understand one aspect is when something like this is said, 
the focus goes on one part of the market, which is the now. Okay? When the focus goes on the now and not on the surroundings, you're already losing the game. Okay? So always keep track of your candlestick patterns happen. Yes, they're good. When they happen, it's good. But where they happen make a difference. It's not just anywhere that they happen that it's useful. It's where they're sitting that makes the difference. Okay? So now looking at all of these things, when you have, let's use a sense of general um, observation. Okay? When you, when you see a hammer, what does, that, what does a hammer indicate to you? Okay? And I want you guys to tell me which one is a hammer. Okay. So which one, uh, which one of these is a hammer to you? Okay, the one on the left or the one on the right? Okay. Uh, Federic is saying the one on the left, hammer and inverted hammer. Okay. Now, what needs to happen with all these pieces of information that everyone is gathering, you need to stop and think to yourself, okay, According to the educational books, this is telling me that the markets are going to turn, okay? If the markets are going to turn, a hammer usually shows up in during a trend. Now, have you ever wondered what these tails mean or what these hats mean? Okay, so one of the main things you want to understand is when you have a formation, doesn't matter what formation it is, and you have a a massive tail on the bottom. Okay, whatever pattern that might that might be, alarm should go off in your head saying that we're getting a lot of pressure from the bottom for buyers. Buyers are pushing. Okay, does that make sense? For example, when you have a candle that's purely like this. Okay, let's say it's a green candle going up and you have a tail on the bottom like this. What does this candle tell you? Okay, it tells you nothing but there's massive strength going long. It tried to go down, but it pushed it up so strong that on the top there's barely any head. There's barely anybody selling. There's anyone pushing it down. Okay, so take a look at this. Look at this candle right here. Let me make it bigger so you guys can see this. Take a look at this candle here. Now, there is a hat on top, but is there any tails? No. Okay? It's basically telling you that it's, it's, there's still a lot of pressure on the sell side. As the market is pushed down... Take a look at this. Look at all these tails start forming up, telling you that there is some buying pressure. Okay, I'm going to refresh my screen. Sorry, it looks like someone can't see it. Okay, telling you that there is some buying pressure. Okay, the screen should be up. And this happens everywhere, everywhere that you see. You'll see markets pushing, pushing, and pushing, and then you'll get to a point where towards the end of a trend, you'll start seeing tails or hats popping up. Now, let me show you something here. Okay, let me get you a nice example here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, when you see this pattern, what does it tell you? The one I have my arrow on. Okay. Selling pressure. A lot of sellers. Okay. Downward pressure. Now, there is a terminology that comes with this candlestick pattern. Okay. What I'm, what I'm trying to tell you guys is, okay, very well. If you know the terminology, great. But the information that this tells you, the information that this tells you is one strong piece of information, and that's this. 
is that we have a lot of selling pressure, which is shown right here in this hat that I've circled. Why is there a lot of selling pressure in this hat that is circled? It's because we've had sellers here before. Look how strong the markets have moved away from here in the past. Look how strong the markets have moved away from here in the past. And look how much it's struggling right now. Okay? Whether you want to call it supply zone, you want to call it resistance, whatever you want to call it, the fact that this candlestick pattern, this engulfing pattern, which we are all used to, it's actually telling us this entire story in, in reality. Okay? Now, if you use the pattern by itself, it's like, okay, let me shoot in the air and let's hope I hit something. Okay, it's it's where the pattern is sitting that makes the drift that that makes the difference. Okay, let's move forward. Let me show you some more examples here. All right, take a look at this. Now, many people look at this area as inside bars. Okay, this is also a type of candlestick pattern style trading. There's an inside bar. Okay. And then the next bar after that broke out of it, went long. Okay, um, let's give it a moment. Let's wait it for it to update. I've put a circle on my screen. Let me know when, when you guys can see that, and I'll begin. Okay, okay, great. So this is what we call an inside bar, according to textbook examples. And we we start to see information that okay inside bar most people what they say is if it crosses above i'm going long if it crosses below i'm going short they have all these funky techniques that they've built up okay fair enough but what is the one key information this tells you this area well analyze it you have a candle here that gives you this massive tail on the bottom which tells you okay there's buying pressure now this buying pressure that we see, okay, but does it have any logical sense behind it? Is there any logistics coming in from here? Why is there buying pressure here? Well, if you look at your support from earlier, it's the same bloody area. It's the same place where they had tails before. Right. It's the support from February 14th. So you're seeing this happening after you get this long tail, you see the market struggling after that. You don't see big candles anymore. You start to see smaller candles, which you may also refer to as a doji, as a potential market turnaround. So is it the actual candlestick pattern that's telling you that, okay, we're going to go? Or is it the entire information? That's the question you want to ask yourself. Okay? So... It's all, yes, it's always going to be the bird's eye view. It's not the pattern that makes a difference because if you look at this pattern, everyone's going to be selling. Okay? They're, they're all going to be selling. Okay? It's, it has to be a bird's eye view. You need to understand where the pattern is sitting in terms of how the markets are going to move. Okay? Let's, let's take a look at some more examples. Take a look at this area. Now, if I take a look at here and I see all of these tails starting to show up, okay, it's almost like the tails are telling a tale, okay? They're giving you a heads up that something is wrong here. Something is wrong here. Yeah, give it a moment. It, it should refresh. Sorry, I have a blue box on my screen. Now, let me know when the blue box shows up. Okay, good. So we see a bunch of tails here. Okay? They're just building up more and more and more. And as as the markets come down to this area in large candles, and then you start making these tails, look at the size of the candle. They start to shrink. They start to shrink. The bodies get smaller and the tails start getting bigger. Okay? Indicating to you there is buying pressure coming in here. There is buying pressure. Okay? This is the same area where the markets took off from earlier. Same price area. Okay? So, 
keep track of all of these things when you're doing candlestick patterns. It's not just the patterns. You need to understand that it's 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 the tails that go along with it, the tails and the hats. Now let's take a look at an inverse scenario. Okay, we looked at sides from the bottom. Okay, let's take a look at some inverse scenario. There's another one. Okay, you want to call this support or you want to call this a candlestick pattern right here or an inverse hammer. Okay? You know, you will get inverse hammers many of the time, but it's where it is that matters. Now take a look at this one. Did it work? No. Those who bought got killed. So it's always in relation to what is going on in in the long-term market. Okay? All right. Now, let's take a look at uh, the inverse scenario. Same situation. Here's your hammer. Here's your hammer again. And then here you have your outside bar. Okay? Or your engulfing pattern. These are all candlestick patterns, but they all are giving you one piece of information. Sellers pushing. Okay? Yes. Yes. So you will always tend to see some information um, with your candlestick patterns, but if you're dead strict on candlestick patterns, and you don't have a bird's eye view, that's what candlestick patterns tend to do. When you're looking at a candlestick pattern, your focus goes directly onto that one particular candle. And that's the problem. Okay? So not all candlesticks are created equal. Okay, let's take a look at some current market scenarios. See what we have in the recent markets. All right. Markets are now headed short. Okay. This is one of the ways that we trade um, the NFP um, also, is we look at the daily charts and to see the information from the day ahead. Now, take a look at this. When you have a candle, I'm, I'm going to draw this to, um and uh, it's it's I'm drawing something blue on my screen. If it doesn't show up, let me know. When you have a candle that looks like this, on the daily chart or on the hourly chart, okay. Just right now, I'm gonna have you guys, all of you guys, stop and think for a moment. Forget what the books are telling you. Forget what anybody's telling you. Use your brain. And look at this pattern right now and tell me, how do you think the next candle is going to look once you see something like this? What information do you see building up? Okay. You see buying, right? Next one will open higher, a push to the top. Very good. So you're seeing that there's a lot of buying pressure. So you can, you can almost assume that the next candle will breach its high will breach its high. Now, if for instance you had a pattern like this now, I'm going to I'm going to change the design of this. Now what do you think the next candle is going to be? Do you think it's going to breach its high? Okay? So now what do you think? Do you think it's going to breach its high? Okay? You see the sellers are coming. Okay? And it might do, Ray. That is very correct. Remember First things first, it is a green candle, okay, or blue candle if you want to look at it. It is telling you that it's long, but there is selling pressure now coming in, which means the market is still long, but not for long. Okay, that's the way I like to put it. The markets are long, but not for long. Yeah, it's slowing down, basically. So, same thing here. Take a look at this one. Okay, I put an arrow underneath it. Um, once you guys see the arrow, let me know. Once you see that candlestick pattern, can you almost automatically assume the next candle is going to get some pressure? 
right? So you see that the markets have the ability to push from this candlestick pattern. Now, whatever the information might be, uh, it's a doji, a hammer, a engulfing, a maribozo, a shooting star, whatever the information might be, what is it telling you? Okay, that comes down to the bottom line. What is it telling you? Okay, now let's take another example um, where it's a slightly similar, but it's a different scenario. Take a look at this one. What happens here? I, I move the arrow. Okay, the sellers are coming, right? There's some selling pressure. Now, it does not mean the candles are immediately going to reverse. It's telling you that even though the markets are long, we're long, but not for long. Take a look. We reached the recent highs. Okay, we reached the recent highs, but look how much struggle it had to reach the recent highs. You're getting some selling pressure. Exactly. The markets are getting exhausted. You're getting selling pressure. Same thing here. A big body, but then you have a tail start to show up. Okay, I drew another arrow. You have a tail start to show up, indicating the markets are trying to slow down. Okay? My second arrow that I have drawn on the same screen just now indicates a strong buying pressure. The tail is massive, the hat is small, and the body is pretty decent. Okay? Indicating we're good for a long. Okay? So, as of right now, as of right now, is everyone understanding what I'm trying to say when it comes to candlestick patterns? Okay, this is step one of what I wanted to teach today. Step uh, out of two. Okay, everyone with me so far? All good? Excellent. Let me move on to the next phase now. Okay, the next phase is the strength of buyers and sellers. The strength of buyers and sellers. I'm going to draw two circles on my screen, and you tell me where there is more strength. I just draw circle number one, and I draw circle number two. Which one do you think has more strength? Yeah, let me know whenever you see it. It's fine. Okay. When you see it, what I what I want you to do, guys to focus on is not what the market did immediately. Okay? Not what the market did immediately because we, that we could care less for that. Okay. Um has it shown up yet? No. Let's give it another 10 seconds. If it doesn't show up, I'll restart the screen sharing. See if that helps. Okay, I'll restart the screen sharing. Uh, Gary, it's working fine. Um, okay, I just restarted it though. Give it a second. Yeah, um, Boyki, I think my I'm on a 12 megabyte connection, but uh, I'm in China, so they really restrict the upload speed. You see the circles? Okay, just give it a second. Sorry, um, I, I'm, I just restarted the screen sharing. Give it a moment, please. Okay, the screen sharing should be on now. Let me know if you guys can see it. Okay. Now, coming back to the question, there's two circles. Which one do you think has more strength? Okay, the second one. Okay. Now, whenever you see these patterns that they show up, don't worry about, okay, I see a pattern, I must trade it now. No, 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 no. You're not a candlestick trader. I'm, at least I'm not. Okay. Candlesticks are wonderful. Are wonderful to tell you information that you need to see in the future. Okay. When I see a candlestick pattern right now, I'm like, oh, interesting. This area is of interest to me. It doesn't mean that, oh, okay, doji sell. Oh, hammer, buy. No. It's not a trading system. Okay. And if it was a trading system, everyone would be making millions. It doesn't work like that. So 
when you're looking at this entire scenario, you're saying that, okay, the second one is more important. As you see prices coming back to that area, okay, you see the markets reach that area once again, that second circle that you had, that we had drawn. It reaches that area once again and it starts now creating candlestick patterns that interest you. It now has your inverse hammers. It now has your dojis. It now has your engulfing pattern. But now it makes actual sense why it, it would work. Do you guys see the third circle that I have drawn on my screen? Okay. So you, do you get why, what I'm trying to tell you guys in terms of now location? Okay. Yeah, you get confirmation, Samira. Absolutely. Okay. You know, yes, um, Ray, like you said, it's counter trend. You know, it's, it's almost like it's death. You know, you're going against the trend. But it's telling you that this is the same spot that the sellers were sitting before. They will try to push again. Okay, you can use your and then after that, you, it's 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 on your trading style how you want to use your exits, how you want to risk make your risk to reward. But the focus that I want to give you guys is candlesticks patterns by itself, in my personal opinion, are useless. Okay, with with with, with all due respect to people who have spent hours and hours making them, it's it's really. You know, um, it's, yeah, the area is very, very, very important. Um, are you, um, Boyki, are you using Western and Eastern? Um, what, what, what does that mean, Boyki? Uh, Forex Gal, second circle would be a failed trade with long green. Second circle would be a failed trade. Well, second circle is not what you're trying to, well, you're not trying to trade the second circle anyway. The second circle only indicates that this is an area of interest to us because from the first and second circle, we see that the second one has a lot of selling pressure. Okay? Support resistance equals west, candles equals east. Uh, no, I'm not using that style. Okay? Forex scale correct, but long red candle would be misleading to sell. Well, here's how you, here's how you want to look at it. Look at the strength; it goes away. Okay. After it makes these um, these big hats on top, right? These big long things that show up on top of the bodies. These these big hats or tails or wicks, whatever you want to call them. Look at the way it moves away from it. It doesn't move away with a candle that's ten pips, twenty pips. You know, when you have a candle that's a ro long red candle, that should be very, very uh, useful to you. It's like, whoa, the buyers don't even stand a chance at this area. It just drops. The market just dropped. Every time the market's come to this area, it's dropped. It's come here two times, and it just pushes it away really strongly, telling you that the sellers here have power like no, uh, no one else. Okay, yeah, the long green one is a trick. Now, when you see the long green one show up, what is it telling you? Where where is the long green one coming in from? Okay, you need to you need to take a look at those areas too. Yeah, it's it, exactly. It's like the buyers are trying. Where did the green one come from? It comes from here, and this area is an area where the buyers look at this. Look at all these tails coming out here. It's the same area. This is why you get these green candles coming out of this area. Okay. FX Boyke, uh, do we need to only use one hour charts? No, uh, you can actually use um, this information on any time frame. I personally prefer um, higher time frames, um, if, if that's your question. But uh, it is, can be applied on any time frame. Okay, uh, Dushyant, uh, when it comes again to meet that area, price holds for four hours. What does that mean? Okay, one thing, okay, the market moves up. 
to this area where we where we had drawn a third circle, right? And you're saying the price has held up to four hours. Now, imagine the time it's spent there. Spent four hours there. The candles are small. Okay. When when the market halts after a strong move, take a look at if you, if you ever go on to um, Oanda shares this, shares this information. Take a look at their order screen. Their orders pile up like crazy because people have a tendency to start buying. They see a long candle north, and they're like, shit, I missed it. Okay? Uh, sorry for the language. They see a long candle north, and they're like, oh, my God, I missed it. And then they see a struggle for a three to four candle, and they're like, okay, I got to get in now. And that's when the, the long orders come in. What will happen at this moment is there will be one last push to the north for those who sell to take them out and for those who go long to be soon to be taken out. And then it will drop. Yeah, and these are people who just chase the market. Okay, retail traders. You know, they're known for chasing the market. That's perfectly fine. It's just how the business works. Okay, I've drawn I've drawn the illustration um, on my screen here how the market goes up, halts a little bit, then it will make a slight push further to the north, and then it will drop. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys an example of that, and I'm gonna show you why this happens. It's quite interesting, actually. Take a look here. I'm going to put an indicator on my screen. Yes, we all hate indicators. I'm going to put it on my screen anyways, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Let me know when you guys can see um, see, see my screen. And you see I've, I've put on an indicator on the bottom of my screen. Yeah, whenever it comes up, let me know. I'll start whenever you guys are ready. It's fine. Morning, Joginder. Okay, you guys see it now? Excellent, excellent, excellent. You see how the market moves up strongly? I'm gonna, The same scenario I'm going to show you. Market, I'm going to put an arrow there. Okay. Okay. Uh, you always say to see the bigger picture, but only on one hour chart today. No, you have to actually look at the bigger picture with multiple time frames, Boyke. Um, but for the sake of an example, to understand that even when you're looking at something so precisely on the same chart, even there you have to expand your eyes. Remember, like like how a little child looks at the screen and says, "Oh." I'm going to sell because the market looks like it's going down. Why does a child say that? He, his eyes look from the left corner of the screen all the way to the right corner of the screen, and he says, it's going down. For us traders who have been trading for many, many years now, our focus goes on to the current price action, and we forget what's on the left of our screen. We, we tend to focus on everything that's running at the moment, and we get taken away by it. Okay, does that make sense? So yes, you have to look at multiple time frames, but of course, it's just uh, just to give you a representation that even on the current time frame that you're looking at, there is information more that you can refer to. Okay, so on this particular one, uh, we got another five minutes remaining here. I'm going to tell you this, guys, real quick. Take a look. Same thing happens here. I've drawn a red arrow. Can everyone see my red arrow? Okay, I've drawn a red arrow. The market goes up very strongly, and then it halts sideways. Okay, this halt period, if you take a look at any indicator out there, okay, any indicator out there, it will show you an oversold position. Every trading system, every automated trading system, every trading strategy, you name it, is getting ready to sell in this area. 
they're saying, we're going to sell. Okay? Once the selling exists, okay, now put yourself in the seat of a person who wants your money. Okay? Forget about winning this particular trade. Just think, theoretically. If I need to win money, how do I win? If I win, a bank will not print special money for me. If I win money, that means someone else on the other side has to lose money. Okay? Always remember this concept. So, this is the area that everybody is selling. Okay? That's sector number one. Everyone is selling. There's there's sellers here. What does it do? It first bursts north. All the stops that were on top get triggered. All the sellers are now taken out. Second thing, buyers start jumping in because they're assuming now that this is a breakout trade. Markets are going long. Buyers now officially get killed also. The markets, after after it does poke to the north a little bit, it then shoots down south very, very firmly. This is the point where buyers get killed and sellers get killed. Okay? And when it actually goes in a sell, everyone who sold is in this mind frame that, oh, of course it was a sell. My stop was too close. That's the mentality everybody gets. My stop is too close. Let me remove my stops. Let me widen my stops. And if you do that, you're never getting out of your account balance. You're always going to stay in that account balance, if not lower. You cannot scale. If you cannot control your risk to reward, you absolutely cannot scale. Okay? So it comes down to these larger players, when they when they capture these fake outs, whether it may be from news or whatever it is, these large players now have enough momentum. Why does the market move? Is because now the bigger orders that are in the market that is running is from these bigger players because the smaller players are getting eaten out. This is why now the market gets momentum. It gets speed because now there's more sellers in the market suddenly than the buyers or the little, little players that were in there. It gets mass momentum. This happens every time. Take a look at this area. I'm going to draw you one more circle here. Tell me that you don't see the same thing here. Okay, I'm going to draw two circles on on the top and even on the indicator. Oversold area. It will poke through to the top one more time, and then it will drop firmly. Okay, find a strategy. Stick to your risk to rewards. Candlesticks are extremely, extremely valuable. I will not tell you that, that it's not valuable. It's extremely valuable. Just make sure you have a sense of direction. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you all for attending today. Thank you once again for Epic Street for having me here today. Um, if there's any questions that you guys have, I will probably be around in Epic Street uh, next month. I will be here with another webinar. hope it was valuable for you guys today. And I hope the information that I shared with you guys can keep you alive in the market. So thanks a lot, guys. Have a wonderful day.